As you can tell by this sepia filter, our story begins in the distant past, specifically the Bronze Age, about 4,000 years ago. There wasn't really a lot going on in those days, so people spent most of their time farming, wearing silly hats, and taking part in the hottest new trends, like dying of dysentery. Hey, sometimes water makes you throw up and die, them's the breaks. Ancient medical wisdom recommended getting dirt out of your water by putting water in your dirt, straining boiled water through sand and gravel to catch all the gritty bits until it came out clear. If you wanted properly purified water, you could double down on the boiling, evaporating it completely and catching the steam so that you were left with lovely distilled water and a small pile of shitty mud. But if you don't want to get the water hot and dirty, or indeed clumpy like the ancient Egyptians with their alum salt coagulation making gritty bits clump together, which was admittedly very effective even if they wouldn't figure out the very sciencey reasons why for several millennia, <laughs> Then you'd have to wait until 4 or 500 BC when an ancient Greek thinking person invented the corner of a pillowcase. The Hippocratic Sleeve, made by father of Western medicine Hippocrates, was a sort of cloth cone thing that you poured boiling water into. The cloth caught all the dirt and gunk, and the water passed straight through. It was honestly decently effective, which is just as well, because it was the best idea we had for a very long time. This was largely because of the Romans, or rather a sudden distinct lack of Romans. That's right, it's the Dark Ages, and nobody can see anything, because it's so dark, and also because, you know, the tyranny and rampant diseases. People really weren't doing well. But not for long! Well, a thousand years, give or take. But there is a light on the horizon, and it smells like bacon. Sir Francis Bacon, to be precise, with his desalination experiments in the early 1600s. He helped develop a process for taking the salt out of seawater, making it much mm. tastier. Then in 1675, a Dutch microbiologist invented Dutch microbiology. And fortunately for us, it worked everywhere else as well. Finally, people could see the microscopic wriggly things swimming about in their water, even if it looked and tasted perfectly clear. So they got to work de-wriggling. Now it's the Enlightenment and everyone can see again. Hooray! The de-wriggling is going really well. We've got charcoal filter urns, filtered rainwater tanks, even municipal water treatment plants. But what we also still have is vomiting death. See, even with all these scientific advances, everyone still believed that diseases like cholera and typhoid came from breathing bad air. Everyone except Dr. John Snow. In 1854, he used some of that Dutch microbiology to trace a cholera outbreak to a public water pump. He used chlorine to kill the cholera, and the epidemic was over in a matter of days. And that really got people talking. Governments started passing laws and making policies that regulated the quality of drinking water, all built on using chlorine to kill bacteria. However, this system wasn't without its own problems. Chlorine made the water taste and smell funny, and while it won't make you throw up and die, it can still irritate your skin, eyes, and lungs. Then there are the nasty cast and trihalomethanes that are made when chlorine reacts with organic things in the water. That's why we still use filters. We've got tap filters, fridge filters, shower filters, kettle filters, coffee filters, and far too many filters to keep track of. But if you really want to get the bits out of the stuff, why not do it all in one go? 